Welcome to OHSU Talk Shorts. I'm Peter Apononu, Toxicology Fellow at OHSU. Today we will be discussing the basics of the emergency management of iron toxicity. You're working a busy ED shift when you receive an EMS call that a 17-year-old female is en route with hematemesis after ingesting a bottle of her aunt's iron pills. You rally a team to the resuscitation area and realize you need to think quickly about how to manage this case. On her arrival, you note she is tearful. She's actively vomiting, and you note some blood tinge to her emesis. Her heart rate is 117 beats per minute. Her blood pressure is 102 over 76. EMS hands you an empty bottle. You note the pills are 325 milligrams each of ferrous sulfate. How much iron did she take? Iron pills come in a number of forms. A useful mnemonic to remember is 357 Magnum is a fast shooting gun. F is for ferrous fumarate, which contains one-third elemental iron. S is for ferrous sulfate, which contains one-fifth elemental iron. And G is for ferrous gluconate, which contains one-seventh elemental iron. So we can figure out how much iron is in each tablet by using this mnemonic. As an example, this patient took tabs containing 325 milligrams of ferrous sulfate. Because it's sulfate containing an S, we divide by 5 to obtain the iron content per tablet. If each pill contains 65 milligrams of elemental iron and she took 100 pills, she took 6.5 grams of iron. She's a 60 kilogram patient, so her dose is approximately 100 milligrams per kilogram. Note that iron carbonyl and iron polysaccharide contained in many of the newer iron formulations do not typically cause toxicity. A dose of 20 to 40 milligrams per kilogram can cause GI symptoms like abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, potentially even some hematemesis. This can develop from Mallory Weiss tears or from true mucosal irritation. A dose of 60 milligrams per kilogram can cause more serious effects like hypotension, tachycardia, anion gap acidosis, hyperglycemia, and a leukocytosis. A dose of 100 milligrams per kilogram can be lethal. Back to our patient. What are the initial steps in management? First, you should provide IV fluid resuscitation through two large bore peripheral IVs. Antiemetics can be provided as well. You do this and her heart rate improves to 96 beats per minute and blood pressure to 110 over 82. She stops vomiting but continues to complain of abdominal pain. You can consider obtaining a KUB since iron tablets can be radio opaque. Sending an iron concentration may help management. While practice patterns vary, in general for iron concentrations over 500 micrograms per deciliter, deferoxamine chelation is indicated. Note that a 4-hour iron level will give you the steady state concentration, so a repeat iron concentration can be performed at 4 hours post ingestion. However, for the sick patient, don't wait 4 hours to obtain this laboratory test. For the ill appearing patient with reported ingestion of a toxic dose of iron, particularly the patient with hypotension and metabolic acidosis, IV deferoxamine should be started without delay, especially since an iron concentration may be a send-out test in many hospitals. IV deferoxamine can cause hypotension, so this infusion will be increased over time and titrated to the ability of the patient's blood pressure to tolerate infusion. Most start the infusion at 15 mg per kilogram per hour and titrate up to 45 mg per kilogram per hour in serious ingestion such as this one. The infusion may be slowed to 5 mg per kilogram per hour as needed. You might consider treating with norepinephrine if hypotension is not responsive to fluids or is worsening. Deferoxamine is not a benign therapy. The patient should get no more than 8 grams in a 24-hour period. Most patients will improve within 24 hours, but be aware that the use of deferoxamine for more than 24 hours can cause pulmonary toxicity. So if you're starting a deferoxamine infusion in the emergency department, consider reminding your inpatient colleagues about this. Note that the urine will turn a reddish-pink vin rosé color during treatment. Gastric lavage comes with the risk of GI perforation. 
because most patients have had repeated vomiting, many toxicologists recommend against lavage. Iron is not absorbed by activated charcoal in the stomach, so it is not generally recommended, although some providers have used charcoal in serious cases, acknowledging that the pH in a duodenum may make adsorption of iron to activated charcoal more successful. Because the vomiting patient does not tolerate charcoal well, it is probably best to avoid this therapy as well. Whole bowel irrigation can be used by instilling polyethylene glycol through a nasogastric tube. This is recommended in ingestions with potential to cause serious toxicity, such as ingestions of at least 60 mg per kilogram. For adults, at a rate of 1.5 to 2 liters per hour. For children under 6, use 500 mg per hour. For children 6 to 12 years, use 1 liter per hour. For children over 12, use 1.5 liters per hour. There are five stages of iron toxicity. The first stage is characterized by nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Dehydration contributes to the ill appearance and hypotension in the iron poison patient. With significant GI symptoms, including hematemesis or hematochesia, blood loss can contribute to hypotension. If there are no GI symptoms in the first six hours of ingestion, serious iron toxicity is unlikely. Late phase one signs are hypotension, tachycardia, and pallor. The patient can develop anion gap acidosis, hyperglycemia due to sympathomimetic effects, and a demargination leukocytosis from a stress state. The second or latent stage refers to the period six to 24 hours after resolution of the GI symptoms. Ongoing cellular toxicity due to iron's effect at blocking oxidative phosphorylation continues. In the third stage, profound toxicity develops from hypovolemia, vasodilation, poor cardiac output with decreased tissue perfusion, resulting in a worsening metabolic acidosis. Patients can develop lethargy and coma, worsening GI bleed, acute kidney injury, and pulmonary edema. The fourth stage is characterized by hepatic failure, which can occur two to three days after ingestion. Stage five, which rarely manifests in patients, can include gastric scarring, pyloric stenosis, and small bowel stricture. Let's return to our case. The patient is started on 15 milligrams per kilogram per hour of defaroxamine and whole bowel irrigation via NG tube at 1.5 liters per hour. The patient developed some worsening hypotension in the ED so was continued on IV fluids and started on norepinephrine. She was admitted to the MICU overnight and MICU team was able to increase her rate to 45 milligrams per kilogram per hour. Within 16 hours, the patient had resolution of her hypotension. Her urine, initially van rose color, had become clear. Norepinephrine was weaned off overnight and her defaroxamine infusion was discontinued the next day. She was subsequently dispositioned to an inpatient psychiatric facility. Let's review the iron treatment algorithm. For the asymptomatic patient with a history of small ingestion of under 20 milligrams per kilogram, if no GI symptoms develop within the first six hours, the patient can be dispositioned home or to a psychiatric care facility as appropriate. For ingestion of more than 20 milligrams per kilogram, or if GI symptoms are present, obtain iron concentration, check acid base status, and look for visible iron pills on KUB. If concentration, is 500 micrograms per deciliter or greater, begin treatment with defaroxamine and begin whole bowel irrigation. If patient reports iron ingestion and at any time develops metabolic acidosis or hemodynamic instability with hypotension and tachycardia, send serum iron concentration and begin defaroxamine infusion with whole bowel irrigation and disposition to the ICU. Thank you for tuning in to OHSU Talk Shorts. See you next time.